I'm Colin Murphy, Deputy Editor with the Far Eastern Economic Review. Earlier this month, I met with Doreen Weisenhaus, a media law expert at the University of Hong Kong. Ms. Weisenhaus is also co-author of the book, Hong Kong Media Law, A Guide for Journalists and Media Professionals. Increasingly, governments in Asia are cracking down on freedom of expression through more stringent censorship and by blocking sensitive websites. Most recently, Thai academic G. Ungaporn fled the kingdom to escape prosecution for allegedly offending the king. Ms. Weisenhaus thinks this problem can be boiled down to two main points. Well, in a phrase, political instability and vulnerability. There has been a lot of political turmoil in Thailand as well as in much of Southeast Asia over the last few years. In two years, there have been five governments uh, in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So that just really adds to the uncertainty and the impact. And there was a hope that the new prime minister uh, would bring a different sensibility about press freedom. Uh, he's young, he was educated in the West. When he was an opposition leader, he said all the right things. However, a reality of when someone assumes power can often be different from before they're in power. And so that has created quite a bit of concern. Uh, there have been uh, a lot of websites that have been closed down. There have been a number of prosecutions and people arrested uh, for uh, uh, saying things against the monarchy. And so that really has a lot of people concerned. Yet Thailand is not alone. Authorities in neighboring Malaysia continue to closely monitor and control dissenting voices. As you know, Malaysia has very strict licensing laws as to who can get uh, publication rights. Um, so there was a hope that maybe that would be loosened up a little bit. That didn't happen. Um, but uh, more troubling has been uh, these prosecutions against bloggers. Unfortunately, Malaysia um, has on its books some very harsh laws which they have not been hesitating to use. They have the Internal and Security Act, they have Official Secrets Act. They have these laws that they've had around for a long time that they hadn't used, but suddenly they're reviving them when it comes to uh, internet writings and internet um, comments. So one of the biggest trends, of course, over the last 15 years or so uh, throughout Asia, but particularly Southeast Asia, have been new democracies, or democracies that have undergoing a lot of turmoil and change. And so with democracy comes press freedom, and so more opportunities for people to write about what's going on, to blog, to say different things. But then all, that also creates a backlash, a backlash against criticism that might be seen as uh, inst unstable uh, to the ruling party. Of course. China excels in curtailing dissent and has proven itself to be very creative, especially in its control over the Internet. China is a whole other ballgame. Um, as uh, Fear has written about many a times, um, uh, China uh, has its own system of, of regulation, both its own media and the foreign press who come to report there. They have a very sophisticated way of dealing with um, the Internet, from filtering uh, to uh, 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 deputizing others to help them monitor, from ISPs to websites and so on. And in fact, the fear, of course, throughout uh, the region is that other countries will look to China to see what it has done in a very sophisticated way to monitoring the Internet. But reporters in the region are fighting back. A range of associations and bodies are emerging around the region to press for greater press freedoms and to offer legal protection to journalists. Well, one of the things uh, they can do, they're already doing, and that is they're working with each other. Rather than each country trying to deal with their own problems, they're going cross-border. Uh, one key group is called the Southeast Asia Press Alliance, um, which handles countries in Southeast Asia. They've been working with um, organizations like the International Federation of Journalists and going beyond just journalism, but working with law groups because they realize that it's not just the journalists who need to band together, but the lawyers as well, that there has to be a tradition of defending the press. But oftentimes in these cases, they don't even teach media law in their own law schools. So it's working with groups like the International Bar Association, Oxford University, Hong Kong U, um, my school, my center, um, and trying to develop curriculum to teach these courses, which now for the first time are being offered in some of these countries, and then also teaching them how to defend a case. How do you argue it? What kinds of international arguments can you bring in and hopefully get the national courts to accept? But things could get worse for journalists in Asia before they get better. 
There are things that you can look at and say there are going to be issues of concern, and particularly in Southeast Asia, and that is in 2009, 2010, there's going to be a number of major elections, national elections coming up. So you look at those countries and see who's got elections coming up, what are the big issues, and you can be guaranteed uh, that there will be some issues and problems uh, uh, dealing with the journalists uh, doing their jobs. Um, it's a very uh, 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 dramatic time uh, for the region, uh, in, uh, not just because of elections, but because of the economic downturn. It's a global issue, and it's impacting all the countries, um, and nobody is immune, and not even China. And with those kind of uh, economic downturns and problems will be more instability issues. There will be millions of people out of work, say, in the, in the factories in southern China and Guangdong um, and throughout that province. Uh, and so with more instability, there's more issues and stories for journalists to cover, and therefore, unfortunately, I think, more barriers for them to do their job. For extracts of the transcript of this interview, and for free access to other review articles on the subject, please go to fear.com.